Welcome to the sixth annual Mother Tongue Film Festival. Thank you for joining us. Live real-time captioning and American Sign Language interpretation are available during today's live program. To view the simulcast that includes these services, please use the link provided in the comments sections. If you're viewing this program after the live broadcast, please note that it will also be made available on our website with closed captioning. My name is Joshua Bell, and I'm Curator of Globalization at the National Museum of Natural History and Co-Director of the Mother Tongue Film Festival. Before I continue, I want to acknowledge with respect the Piscataway people on whose traditional territory the Smithsonian, indeed my own home, stands, and whose relationship within, with the, west, the land west of the Chesapeake Bay continues today. Founded in 2016, the Mother Tongue Film Festival opened annually on the United Nations International Mother's Language Day, which is February 21st. The festival is an effort of Recovering Voices, a Smithsonian initiative involving the National Museum of Natural History, the Center of Folk, for Folk Life and Cultural Heritage, the National Museum of American Indian, and the Asian Pacific American Center. We are grateful to our Smithsonian and non-Smithsonian partners for their support and extend our thanks to our sponsors and partners, all of whom you can find on our website this and our other events. Particularly, I want to give a shout out to the Documentary Educational Resources, or DER, who's helping to co-sponsor this event. Today, I welcome you to the Archival Roundtable, Anthropologists as Storytellers. This program is presented as part of the 2021 Mother Tongue Film Festival, whose theme is the healing power of storytelling. This year, the festival takes place entirely online and runs through the end of May. As always, the festival highlights and celebrates the confluence of cinematic and mother languages. Today, we invite you to participate in a conversation about the important body of work by anthropologists and filmmakers, Lena Frizzetti and Akos Astor, whose films have been recently deposited in the Human Cities Film Archive, which is part of the Smithsonian's National Anthropological Archive. Doing so, today we are going to reflect on their work's trajectory and craft, but also reflect on how anthropologists more widely tell the stories that they do. We'll be taking your comments and questions in the live chat below, so please participate. If you are new to the festival, I encourage you to check out mother tongue, one word, dot si dot edu to learn about the featured films and upcoming events. Your feedback is also welcome on the festival's social media channels. Now I'd like to welcome our guests. Filmmakers and Professor of Anthropology, Lena Frizzetti and Ecos Astor, who are joining us from Providence, Rhode Island. Alice Apley, Executive Director of Documentary Educational Resources, who's joining us from Boston, Massachusetts. And Pam Wintel, Senior Film Archivist at the Human Cities Film Archive, who's joining us from Washington, D.C. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Joshua. Thank you. Um, on behalf of DER, I'm delighted to be partnering with the Smithsonian on the screenings of Akos and Lena's work and today's discussion. Um, DER has upwards of 25 films and collections that are a part of the Human Studies Film Collection and that we distribute. Akos and Lena's works are one of the gems in that collection and it's a real treat to take the time today to, albeit virtually, um, to talk with the filmmakers and with Pam um, about this important body of work. So I want to just jump right in, Lena and Akos, um, and start off with uh, kind of a big question about, as anthropologists and filmmakers, can you talk briefly about how you bring these two disciplines together in your work? I, I think I'll start off with a, a brief uh, response there, and then uh, um, Q Lena in to follow. Okay. Um, just a preamble because it, it needs a little preamble that before we came together as filmmakers, uh, I've already done a bunch of work with my uh, then colleagues and friends uh, and then university in Bengal, a trilogy of films to do with ritual that were very self consciously based on. Uh, on previous research and publications. Now, uh, at this point, I think we can say that uh, what um, what is remarkable is that uh, uh, with a strong research background, field work uh, prior to filming, 
afforded us to be able to allow um, uh, for uh, the unexpected to 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 um, to deal with circumstance and um, and uh, evolve kind of naturally unfolding from film to film. Now this um, previous work then shifted gradually towards just uh, uh, picking um, uh, particular uh, films for, and do the research for them rather than start with anthropology and follow. So the uh, first few films uh, in Bengal, we in effect gave a basis for what we did later, but uh, the uh, pivotal film that we came to work on together was uh, Seed and Earth. And, and this one was a, uh, the product of various uh, uh, circumstances and, uh, and uh, unexpected uh, developments in the field. But again, the background of fieldwork allowed us to then, uh, with my colleague uh, Alfred Guzzetti, to, uh, to adapt and, uh, and deal with what was the reality in front of us. And due to another coincidence or unexpected uh, development, uh, we had to bring in Lena and Ned Johnson to complete the film in, in its second half. Um, after this uh, kind of break in filmmaking, we, we, we did a complete uh, about turn and went to Africa to make films and uh, do field work and anthropology. Um, and as a, as a contrast to India, which, which, which served us well in subsequent work as well. So it, in this period, we, we went to make a, a film about the fish market in Dar es Salaam and uh, um, a charismatic person in uh, Zanzibar. Uh, again, it's something that we can talk about later. But after this, we, we switched back to India and uh, completed uh, 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 two films about um, uh, the singers and, and uh, scroll painters in, in the Patua community, uh, which is when going on rap rapid social changes and so forth. Now, uh, there, as always, we start with an idea, and then the idea develops and becomes a book or a film and so forth. And uh, in, this, in this case, uh, we dealt with performers who were a delight to work with because they, they were literally um, presenting themselves as storytellers uh, to other storytellers and to an audience that they were extraordinarily well used to. So they would have no hum, ums and woos and whatnot in speech. It was absolutely polished. Um, after this came another uh, break and it brought us to the uh, current, uh, our latest film. And um, uh, even in this though, very personal, the, the, the extraordinary thing was how much uh, our work in publications and, uh, and uh, films and anthropology and uh, film uh, coincided and brought together what, what I like to call the ethnographer's knowledge with the filmmaker's art and, and uh, craft, and then uh, developed these to the, um, to, the, to the betterment of both, if one can say that. So now, with that, I think it's Lena's turn to, to give her tale with this uh, uh, collaboration. And before, Lena, before you jump in, Akash, there's some kind of squeaking coming from your headphones. If you can just unplug your headphones and microphone and, and speak directly to the computer, um, we think it would be better. Okay? Just use the computers? Just unplug the, yeah, um, unplug the headphones. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't hear Lena right now. Do, do you hear me? 
Yeah. No, I don't hear you. Nina, do you want to jump in? Yes. Um, so I was I I wasn't really a filmmaker till the late eighties. Um, I was asked by Akush and, and uh, Alfred Guzetti to come and mm -hmm. and complete a film that uh, they had started. And what they realized was missing was the women's component. And I have done, by then I have done numerous um, projects on, on issues of gender in Bengal um, uh, and, and published on that subject. So I, for me to jump in without even thinking about what it is I'm doing, uh, in the back of my head, I had the idea of what the ethnography of women is all about. And so I had a routine of what, how they function on a day to day. So if I took a day in the life of a woman, I decided to follow that with Ned Johnson, who accompanied me as the one who was sort of doing the, the, the filming. And together we were very successful because I would guide him and point him to a particular uh, um, event. And sometimes we had this discussion of uh, whether it is visually interesting or not, as it does, doesn't matter. What's interesting is the conversation that's taking place. And it's a, but he didn't know the language, and so mm -hmm. we worked that way. So having had a sense of what the women's world was all about, um, I could easily, I could do it as if it was my second nature. It was very easy to to really um, join somebody who was um, the filmmaker and and guide or be the the person to point at what is important. So for that film, which later on became Seed and Earth, which really combines my work on women and I could just work on men, it's about the, the complementarity of those two that made up the film successful. And it's really one of the most, um, you know, beautifully visualized film, easier to see mm -hmm. and understand than perhaps um, to read the book, because the book tends to be a bit dense, um, um, unless you really are into the density of the words and text and so forth. Yeah. But to contrast that film with the last film that I also worked with, Akos, and in between we have a number of other films, the last film, I did not do research on the last film. The last film is the film about In My Mother's House, and it is basically about a woman, about my mother. And so, even though I didn't do the research, I lived that life. And so it's basically an extension of a woman and I seen as her daughter, what do I see in the, in the lives of this one woman? And so the, 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 the interesting thing is I was five years old or, or soon after five that I was in, in boarding school. So I didn't really know much about my mother. Um, and from high school, I went straight to Chicago to study. But what I came to know about her, what people were telling me about what you're an amazing, you have an amazing mother and so forth. The stories that I started to collect about her really overwhelmed me sometimes. And I said, you know, there's so little I know about her. So we decided to sit together and film this woman's life for the grandchildren, as to her grandchildren or great, -grand you know, grandchildren. And um, from then on, an event happened while we were finished this, this video of my mother that later on we decided it's too important, it is too uh, powerful to just leave it for us. Our, we, this has to be shared. The more we screen this mm -hmm. film, the more people tell us or tell me directly, uh, or her son-in-law, which is the, fi the filmmaker, Akos, that this film is really not yours, it's ours. This woman is not just your mother, it's our mother. So here is a story of a woman that gets appropriated across generations of people that come to see it, but also people, whether they are in the United States, in, in Europe or in India, and multiple stories, are, they tell us how the film affected them in a way that we had no idea that that's what was happening to the film. So my my interest into the film isn't in the technicalities of the filmmaking itself, but in the ethnography of it, in the stories that it does. And every film, I think, has a powerful story that it can tell. So it's um, interesting because, you know, in going from Seed and Earth, which is along with Fishes of Dark, um, it's sort of these 
traditional approaches to ethnographic filmmaking, their community studies in a way, from, from watching Seed and Earth, you sort of get a sense that there's a, you know, that this is sort of a, a, a very, very beautifully and artfully put together, but a catalog of activities that are done by men and women, um, which feels very planned. It, when I was watching it, it felt very, you know, thought out. Whereas in watching In My Mother's House, the last film, um, to me, it struck me that it, it seemed like the film really unfolds in front of the camera, the story unfolds, you're discovering. And I wondered if you could talk about um, storytelling through film um, as anthropologists and these different choices and approaches. Oh, you want to go out, Chris? <laughs> um, so we, you're right, you're absolutely right. And that um, in my mother's house, it unfold, and the story itself unfolded, and it's done exactly at the time that it was, it was filmed as it was happening. Um, and unlike, unlike um, Seed and Earth, Seed and Earth, it might, it might appear that it is planned, but it wasn't. The part of the film that was done by Akos and Alfred Guzetti, and the part that was done with Ned and, uh, and, and myself, in a way they fit together, but they weren't done to, to, to uh, we followed a routine, a routine of what people do on a daily uh, basis. Right. Men get up and go to the yeah. farms, women start in the kitchen. So there is like this private and public domain. Um, the only time you see women in the public is when they go to bathe. Um, so there wasn't anything planned or added to the film. It might appear like that, but it's like you get up, you dress up, you go to the office and come back, something like that. Yeah, but it's planned in the sense that you had some, you knew there were certain kinds of activities you were looking yeah. for. Whereas in my mother's house, my sense is, you didn't know where you were gonna travel next in, Absolutely. in following this journey of your family. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm wondering, is there something, you know, what's lost or gained in those two very different approaches? Yeah, and approaches. Akos, you're muted. Yes. Okay. Um, you can hear me? Yeah, there is yeah. an echo. There's, yeah. There's an echo. I mean, maybe I have to take over, you know, while I plug myself back in. Akos, you know what it, okay, now talk. Uh, okay, uh, is, this, is, is this better? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Give it a try. Yes. Yeah. Is it okay? Yes. All right. Well, just to catch up. Um, yes, indeed, because um, um, the though, though they weren't necessarily uh, conscious choices and uh, decisions whether we do this, we never made a decision about whether we're doing film or anthropology. It was again because of this. Uh, ethnographic, uh, this uh, critical knowledge, this uh, density that we had uh, in the background uh, allowed us to respond. For example, um, in Seed and Earth, uh, we, we just called it the rice film when we worked, worked on it. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make a film about uh, the rituals and, uh, and um, sociology of uh, rice making. Now, it, when we got to the field uh, with Alfred, uh, the monsoon failed and there was no <laughs> no plant, no rice uh, cultivation <laughs> for a long time. So that's why that period in the film where it's all to do with a storm and rain and 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 so forth. Mm -hmm. And and it was um, later when they picked up that we uh, with, that we uh, saw the the it, it was the actually in the editing that what you say mm -hmm. comes through mm -hmm. that it was a kind of a counterpoint because it was naturally happening but then we had the, we started with the outside of the village came inside we did the men's activities we did the women's activities yeah. play with the children so this was over a three or four months period of filming by four filmmakers in sequence. So it was a very happy coming together of all of our crafts. And, and the other thing is that both Ned and Alfred were very, um, um, very um, close to the kind of approach we were taking. So they were 
I would call them ethnographic filmmakers without being anthropologists. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 it came. And the mother's house, uh, the interesting part came when we decided to open it up and create a context for it. And then we added the colonialism, the Italians, uh, Italian, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, the, the situation in Italy, the, the, uh, the wider interviews with uh, family members in Eritrea. These were all brought together both to discover the family and created uh, for a bigger, wider story. And in between yeah. came the others that all had uh, these, uh, both a response to the circumstance and reliance mm. on, on our ethnographic approach, yeah. using the film techniques that seemed most, yeah. most, um, most yeah. uh, uh, serendipitous. Yeah. But to add to what Akash was saying is that unlike the other films and the other five films, the last one, of course, has its own difficulties and challenges. And it took eight years to finish mm -hmm. um, because it has to deal with multiplicity of languages. Um, but but also the personal aspect of the film was, was hard. Mm -hmm. For a long time, we just couldn't sit mm -hmm. and look at the footage, um, especially mm -hmm. after she passed away. Um, and so I think to do to do that kind of film, I think it's not just a challenge, but it is a lot inordinate difficulties mm -hmm. of how you can separate yourself. There were times when I couldn't talk about it, about the film at all. It was very hard for yeah. Lena, especially yeah. the funeral, which again it was a trade-off between film and uh, and the and the storytelling, because um, many of our friends said that. You have to start the film with the funeral. That's that's the strong, yeah. uh, just as strong as the uh, interview with uh, Mama Lucia herself. But um, but we we felt that uh, uh, we we'd rather lose something on that structural part mm -hmm. and preserve what you uh, rightly pointed out as this unfolding. Yeah. So it couldn't yeah. come before everything else. Yeah, uh, such uh, such are the <laughs> compromises. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the the middle films, um, singing pictures and songs of a sorrowful man. Um, and now you've you've moved. Uh, well, no, you moved continents later. Um, <laughs> um, and um, but with singing pictures and songs of a sorrowful man, I was thinking about the theme of this festival is about storytelling and these are films about storytellers um, and uh, traditional storytellers but in singing pictures it focuses on women and it talks about how women have not traditionally been in this position mm -hmm. and then the patos in the second film in songs of a sorrowful man are are a, from a minority group that are in this unique position that they can tell the stories of the the, the Hindu stories and the Muslim stories. Yeah. And I thought that was you know interesting because it becomes so much about identity and but also about the role of storytellers sort of as mm -hmm. marginal. Um, and I, I wondered about you as filmmakers as storytellers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how you thought about approaching telling the stories of these storytellers and what kind of stories would make sense? We, we, I, I, um, that's, it's a very good question because, uh, um, when we went to set up to do this film, um, Singing Picture, uh, it was a day after 9 11, and, um, Immediately, we had to decide, should we continue with this film or should we just drop it, go back and come back another day? One of the members of the community said, don't do that, because if you do that, um, the Hindu majority that surrounds the village, uh, the hamlet, will say, okay, even the Americans don't want you. Even the Americans have an issue of, uh, with you on, on, because you are Muslims. So they said, do the film and we make sure nothing will ever happen to you. And they they sort of promised to be our security guard. We started the film, but when we started the film, uh, we had a collaborator, Auditi Shorkar, who 
wanted us to do or to help do this film also, but about the men, particularly one man. And when we began to do the film with him, he was like a cardboard. He couldn't move. He was just fixated on watching the, this the screen. And we just said, this is not a film. And so we started to walk around this hamlet. And the more interesting section of the, uh, of the hamlet were the women when they were painting outside their homes while cooking and taking care yeah. of the kids. I said, this is, this is fantastic. This is a repetition of, you know, some of the works we've done already. And so we, uh, we started to film them. And, uh, and the more we filmed them, the, one, the more we became really attracted to the stories that they are doing and painting on these on these scrolls, so the stories are about domestic violence, uh, child abuse, um, the the child girl, education of females, uh, early marriages, everything that anybody who's social socially conscious and aware would sort of say, this is fantastic, this is what I want to hear stories about, but also about gods and goddesses, Hindu gods and these are Muslims. And they do gods and goddesses and mm. about um, their own uh, Muslim saints and they call them peers. So the more we, we, we got into the world of these women painters, it became very clear that the, the, their work, their, their visual representation, the topics they choose are something so significant that it's not just for the Hamlet, it's not just for India, but it goes beyond. and. They became, we brought them to Brown for three three weeks and they went to Wesleyan for three weeks. They became so popular that um, the popularity itself later on will cause them some problem. They became well known. They've traveled all over the world. They were in Australia, Europe and so on. So what I asked myself, what, did we do something right in, in exposing them publicly in the way that we have done? trying to help them, trying to sell their art, to tell their story. What what were the causes of some of these? And that's just something we really have, have to think about. Mm -hmm. There were some tremendous changes that took on in the village when they when they returned and sort of um, tried to live a normal life. There was no normal life anymore. It had changed. Some for the good and some maybe not so. A few but women. By then, sorry, mm -hmm. um, just to continue, but um, before then, though, they were already well known in India because uh, they, the government has these um, ways of promoting traditional arts and crafts, and, and uh, they performed at various festivals in all the major cities, capitals of the states in India. So that uh, Dolina is right that this particular thing is that they started selling their um, uh, um, scrolls in America for, for much higher uh, uh, prices. And uh, they came back and, and did, did uh, renovations to their houses. And so that, that created, uh, as, she, as Lina says, this, uh, this is, was the imbalance, the, the unintended consequence. And um, uh, but it also empowered them much, much more. Uh, yeah. All of them yeah. were much yeah. more outspoken and 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 uh, confident, easy with um, yeah. with uh, audiences. And you know, in terms of the story, is two films, uh, the, the two halves. Um, I mean, the two films uh, in that community. Um, you know, there are some amazing things in the background that um, it, it's a little bit uh, reminiscent of all the other films that we started out with something and turned into something else. Yeah. So uh, did you, the, did you um, set out to make the films yes. about the Patwas from the second film? How did it change? Yes. Out to make the same. Well, it, it changed exactly as. Uh, um, uh, we, we had them already in the previous uh, fields where there were patuas scattered all over Bengal, but this was a concentration and these were, these were uh, Muslims. In other, yeah. other places, they were Hindus. So this, this um, mm -hmm. in-between um, situation of that goes back to the deeper past of the itinerant singers and, scroll, and scrolls were not mm -hmm. sold. They were these torn classic 
um, examples of scrolls in museums now that the, they would they would take around uh, a perform and they would be given mostly mostly something in means you know rice vegetables mm. rather than cash and uh, and they would bring this home now when the women came in that um, that uh, 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 they eventually began to earn more money even locally um, yeah. that created some problems the other the other interesting thing here is that it brings the question of politics into that there was very strong uh, uh, radical uh, left and right uh, um, stuff going on that influenced our filmmaker just as uh, Lena mentioned in 2001 subsequently there were uh, very violent local elections and not so much Hindu Muslim but different political parties in Bengal. Now, what what happened is that we again started doing a single film, uh, but we realized that uh, Dukusham, the the, the sor sorrowful man, he Dukusham means uh, the, the 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 sorrowful dark one, which is an appellation to Krishna, the 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 second uh, major figure in Hindu uh, theology. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a Muslim name too, and 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 he was such a charismatic person that he could uh, uh, come in and cut right through tradition and uh, all the rest of it and say, "Women, uh, you can earn things. Uh, you stay at home and you can So you start." Uh, but there is an injunction against uh, women in the Quran. He said, oh, "No, there isn't. This uh, this is something." you can do and because he was a, such an mm -hmm. extraordinary figure um, everyone went along with it and mm -hmm. so we de we decided that we really had to um, had to um, um, ma make this into separate uh, films because uh, Dukushan could perform himself mm -hmm. and the whole film is structured around he, he led us through this mm -hmm. you know, the, the way it's edited is he said we'll 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 be talking about this and that and uh and the other one it was the um as lena mentioned uh, uh, concentrating you know, on the women's activities so. so so were the two actually filmed at the same time and then yeah. they were edited as, mm. yeah mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah oh that's interesting yeah mm. I we were able to sift the women and from them from the men basically that's what it was he yeah. made two films yeah, yeah. but but so we, very different you know uh, the, the the issues of social status yeah. and yeah. identity mm -hmm. in each are really about these two different social groups yeah they're very different yeah. as painters mm -hmm. oh. and so so it is it, it resonates a little bit with the form of Kalfan and Zanzibar, in a way, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. Transition, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. that's a great question. That's a great transition because um, I was wondering how did that film come about? And of course, that is a totally different structure in, mm. when we can talk about how it came about and then also how it was structured and edited because okay. um, it's a very different approach. So that was a very interesting film, how it, it happened. We were in Harare, Zimbabwe for the annual African archeological uh, hmm. uh, conference. And on our way back to, we were going back to the US, but we decided to stop in Tanzania. Um, we took this flight and at the airport, there was a huge commotion, so loud. And of course, curious me, I went to find out what is going on. And and it turned out that, that a man was in a wheelchair and he is telling British Airways, if you sold me a ticket, you have to get me to the plane. You have to get me on the flight. Uh -huh. You can't sell a ticket and not be able. But sir, we don't have the means. And so I started to enter into the conversation. I don't know who this guy is. But I started to get into the conversation and I said, you know, he's right. You know, if you don't do that, I'm going to tell the rest of us to cancel our flight. You need to get him on that flight. And she says to me, are you related to him? I said, no, but it's just hum a human issue here. He's in a wheel. What do you expect him to do? And so finally, they found a way to get him on that. Three, three or four men literally carried him because there was no ramp. They carried him to the plane. 
and everything went fine. And at the air, when we got to Dar es Salaam, he asked to talk to us. And he said, come and visit me in Zanzibar and your filmmakers, anthropologists, uh, why not make a film for me? Um, um, and, and But just come and see my organization. It was the first African organization about the disabled. In, in If you lived in Africa, you know if somebody in your family is disabled for whatever part of the body is disabled, they hide that person. But he's saying, I want disability to be out there in society. We are like everybody else. And so we went to see him and we talked about doing this film with him, but he wanted more of a propaganda. I said, no, we'll do a film that you can, st you can still use it for whatever purposes. And um, mm -hmm. in um, and I think I'll let Akos talk about the structure, how we structured the film. But I remember asking her, who are the disabled? And he, he mentioned the blind, uh, the, the uh, somebody who has who, a blind, deaf, a number of disabled, and then he looks at me and he said, "And you, as a woman, are disabled as well." And I and I said, "Okay," um, but then you know, um, in editing the film was interesting, and also why we couldn't show the film, which later on maybe we can talk about. But I, I, this is a different film in that Akos. Um, yeah, of course, you should pick up on on what how we we structured this film. Yeah, and, and I, I think that was also very interesting because it's it is so much about um, this this gentleman and disability, but it's also about the place and the way they're yes. integrated is very interesting. So I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that was yes, sir, uh, that's true. Um, the uh, the, the film then developed with in, in your field. Um, I was there a, a bit longer because uh, I was at the University of Dar es Salaam for a year and Lina couldn't come for the whole year. She had to be back in, in Providence for one semester. And during that month, I, I, I um, got interested in the, in the fish market in uh, in Dar es Salaam, and also uh, followed up with Khalfan uh, in Bar for um, six months back and forth already. And uh, the, uh, the, the way the film turned out is that we didn't want to make it into a portrait. We wanted to make a parallel between the history of the story of uh, of Khalfan and and uh, the story of Zanzibar itself, mm -hmm. and uh, and he he was just uh, uh, ideal in in again it was very easy tell, talking about himself and his life uh, through having gone to all kinds of conferences in in uh, around the world, but mm -hmm. but um, the uh, so we filmed the various places in in Zanzibar that we and activities that then we thought that would create a context for um, for for the film especially the activities of the uh, uh, otherwise able that sometimes they call themselves otherwise able the mm -hmm. people especially the soccer match which which was a, an yeah. absolute revelation um, and yeah. then Alfred came up with the idea that we're doing so many uh, fragments here, why don't we fragment the film completely? Uh, mm -hmm. And then then we had this scrolling text and uh, historical asides and narration, completely breaking with, I think, all traditions of <laughs> ethnographic filmmaking yeah. and still ending up with, with a film that is uh, uh, ethnographic, historic. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. After all, 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 all Anthropology, as Evans Pritchard used to say at the end of life, anthropology turns into history at some okay. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a few years. It's interesting. We've talked now about the different films and and storytelling structures. They are so different from the the mm -hmm. very structured, um, you know, what you were just talking about, or the 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 sort of very novel structure of the two parallel stories about a person, mm -hmm. and a place, and the text, et cetera, versus singing pictures and um, mm -hmm. all of the previous films, which were much more traditionally observational and stuff. And 
Can you, you know, do you feel like there are things that are lost or gained in choosing one structure or mm. storytelling technique over another? Yeah, I think then I'll, I'll just start briefly and then hand over to Lena because it's interesting our, our uh, parallel uh, approaches, but also so also different uh, differences and and in in all these developments we we didn't respond to consciously to changing uh, practices in film or changing developments in anthropology we we went from um, almost as a as a kind of a uh, um, a natural development and transition from one film to the other, according to what uh, seemed to seem to be uh, the next from 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 the work we've already performed there, and and of course uh, you know you you uh, we responded more to the demands of. Uh, of the of the film that we chose to work on, uh, and and then utilize the um, uh, again techniques that that didn't um, seem to be again consciously modeled on anyone else's or any other films or any other convention, but it 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 uh, it responded to the um, the particular demands of the locality, the history the background, since we had so much experience by then that we could confidently step in. And especially this that approach that that took people into our confidence. So the the our our directors were were primarily the the people whose community welcomed us and we were guests in and 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 they they, they often took the lead in in, in this, and we expanded and so forth. Now, uh, Lena has, pro has, has, has more to say on this. No, I think you've, you've done it, actually. See, my sense to answer your question is, um, when you talk about the structure of a, of a film, um, we cannot do more or less than what is in front of us. We cannot really adapt or introduce what is already um, out there. Uh, so everything has to be structured in accordance to what we we know about a, a community, a place, its own particularities. And that got, gets incorporated in, uh, in how we, not how we see it, but how we visualize it and how we, how we, um, it's true that, that our, the, 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 the members of the community, the people that were rep representing the film, become almost our guides to how we move from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that in all of these films, with exception perhaps of the last one in my mother's house, all of these films were taken back to the community after, before the final uh, sort of uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, life of, of a film, before we decide this is it, let's, let's take it to the labs and so on. That that's the point that for me is the most crucial and most important. And taking a film like Singing Picture, and I tell the women, because I, uh, I, I uh, sometimes, I could go, sometimes I do. This one I went and I told them, look, there are two points here in the film that bothers me. And I live in America. I don't live in India. And I'm not a Muslim. So are you okay with it? One, they were, both of the, both plus they were criticizing their religious leaders because they said they lied to us. There is nothing in Islam about about contraception and so on. And and and, and the other one was that if I don't um, abide by by Islamic uh, rules, they will drag me like a, a dead dog uh, into into the grave. So those are the things I said. Are you sure you want us? They said we told you this because we want it out there. Mm -hmm. so the these women were stronger than me, who I was at that time. Uh, you know, worried about what will happen to them. And the same thing with Khalfan. We finished that film, but it was never shown in Tanzania while he was alive. Mm. Because he said, don't show it. Show it worldwide, but don't show it in Tanzania. Because if there are two things that I've said in the film that are politically problematic, 
-hmm. and I could easily be thrown in jail. And I said, I'm, he said, I'm in a wheelchair. I cannot be in jail. Mm -hmm. um, and so we promised, we kept his promise and we told him that we won't show it. Mm -hmm. When he passed away, his widow called us the next day and she said, Khalfan passed away. I want you to come and bring the film and show it. And I went with 50 mm -hmm. copies of this film um, mm -hmm. to give to their organization. And um, we asked you to provide some. <laughs> gracefully provided the film. And when, when we, we were showing you, there were four or five religious uh, uh, Maulawis who said to me, you cannot, sh we, in Islam, we don't have a memorial service. I said, this is a celebration. We're celebrating this man for what he's done. And they said, well, we don't, we don't think we should show this film. His widow said to me, she was sitting in the front, usually, you sit next to me. And I did, and she said, don't worry, nothing will happen. There were three or four of them arguing, arguing that this should not happen. And we shot the film, in the end, one of them came and said, I want to thank you personally because the film was very respectful of the man and very respectful of our religion. So I think we, as anthropologists or filmmakers, that they would be we really worried about that. It's interesting Pardon? that they would be worried about that. Did they, did they distrust what the film would be like? They didn't know what the film was about. And here is the outsider from the United States. Mind you, Anything to do with the U.S. after 9-11 is problematic everywhere in the world, mm -hmm. except, you know, and so these were people who were really antagonistic, you know, and just said, you know, what are you going to show? Uh, and we, and in, the, in the case of, uh, if I might just add this last bit, in the case of singing pictures, two or three women gave up the art of painting, and they're the good ones, and, and, um, it's sad because they were um, their income was supporting the family, but they get un they get pressured from outside forces. The more conservative religious groups who tell them, as Muslims and as women, you should not be in the open like that. You should give up this mm -hmm. and stick to just um, religious learning and so on. And, and was it was it being part of the film that no. we increased exposure? No, it's just that they didn't. They no. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, what, happened, what happened there is, um, to add to what Lena said, uh, uh, that uh, subsequent uh, political and religious developments uh, sharpened this uh, conflict, both in Bengal and Zanzibar. So mm -hmm. as a different kind of uh, more uh, mm -hmm. conservative version of Islam came in, and it was well financed from the Middle East, both in India and uh, uh, so for different people started appearing, different demands were. Yeah. So then this uh, Patua community then, um, uh, they had problems with the, uh, with the Hindu majority saying that you guys are not really Hindu. Then the, the, uh, the, uh, these um, conservative Muslims said you're not Muslim. So if you want to do that, then uh, grow your beards and uh, and uh, stop the women from doing this. So many of the women didn't stop and their husbands uh, uh, supported them. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, these these were just developments that they had to negotiate day to day to day. And, and we didn't instigate. And um, mm -hmm. we just uh, uh, responded to, again, to the demands yeah. Yeah. of the yeah. story. Yeah. So I want to pull um, Pam into the conversation. Pam, I, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how this body of work fits into the Human Studies Film Archive. Well, I kind of feel like I'm the required PSA announcement at this point because <laughs> I'm, I'm learning so much from both Lena and Echo. So I really appreciate this dialogue that uh, we're having. And I, I, I'm trying to think about it. I've been thinking about this and hope I'm coherent because I feel like I've got several thoughts all crashing together at the same time. But I'm thinking about you as anthropologists as storytellers, which is what this is about, and thinking that you're clearly text oriented as well. That, I mean, you've written a lot and yet, and yet you have this sense of the visual that you know how to tell a story through this other medium, which to me is just really fascinating that you can embrace 
this and and of course I think you realize that you have you can reach more people through um, this medium than you are through as you say late in the dry text or the very deep text of an ethnography uh, and and so in looking at your story compared to other collections in the archives I mean, we have films that other anthropologists have shot but as part of their research and they're not really telling stories they might have used them in the classroom or they may have referred back to them in writing their ethnographies I mean the stories aren't told yet is the way I like to think about it. And yes. then we also have filmmakers who have worked in close association with anthropologists, then the classic one being um, Tim Ash and Napoleon Chagnon. Mm. You know, and there but your stories, you really come from this from a different place. And I think that and the ability to be capturing your stories about these stories now will provide for the future this incredible contextual contextualization of um, your work and, and and as Alice has pointed out the very different styles that you've used for your subject matter and letting your subjects really speak for who they are and then I'd like to think that your, you have told your stories from this film, but once it comes into the archives and is made available, whether it be digitization or whatever, the future, and I believe the future holds other formats <laughs> for us, but that these, these records can go back to the communities and, can, and other stories can be told and they can tell stories. And so I like to think that this is, that there are multiple stories here that will eventually be told from this. Now it's hard to think, Lena, about In My Mother's House because that's such a personal film mm -hmm. to you, but I think um, it tells its story because it is everybody's story. In one way or another, this is, is just, it's a very moving, in fact, I'm going to start crying <laughs> when I start thinking about it because <laughs> it is just such a, a moving film uh, about who we are, where we came from, um, our embrace of the unexpected and the unknown, and the way these relatives keep appearing. I mean, I think you end up in Spain, <laughs> you know, which was like a total surprise, <laughs> you know, but I, I just, um, I cannot, I cannot, I, I don't think I really have the words to express how really, how special this collection is to the Human Studies Film Archives and to the Smithsonian and the Smithsonian's goal, which is, um, in, you know, it's about diversity, it's about cultures. I mean, there's one of the grand challenges is called valuing world cultures. Well, that's exactly what you've done is you valued and you've shared your stories about world cultures with the world. And I thank you. <laughs> and then, I, oh, excuse me, I go ahead. No, I just wanted to thank you because uh, really, I, I'm sure uh, Lina will agree that we didn't think of uh, the, uh, the, this work in exactly the same way as you presented. And so this is something new for me. and. And very reassuring <laughs> that something you write it and that it uh, goes beyond uh, uh, bigger than ourselves. And, uh, yes. and, and that, that, that was so well put, I think. Uh, yeah. It's well, it's interesting to, to think about, you know, Pam's um, discussion about the, the life of the film in the archives and thinking about there are scholars on the one hand and there's the community on the other. And I'm wondering if you have other kind of stories or surprises. And, and also I'm wondering, do you think about the legacy of a film when you're when you're working on it? Um, you know, and I, I think the story of, you know, what happened with the Calfam film is amazing, you know. Yes. Um, and so I'm wondering if you if you have any other stories of the circulation of the others or the community reception. Um, we have, I mean, uh, just Pam, you made me cry. Uh, <laughs> I just say one thing about the film, the last film that we did, yeah. it was shown in Italy. And mm. I had this incredible fear of what the Italians would say because they weren't, they weren't, I mean, it, part of my family wasn't the kindest to my mother. 
And um, so I worried because I said, you know, maybe they think I was criticizing them. Maybe I was, but I was presenting the facts as they happen. And um, in the Q&A, I just couldn't, uh, it was so successful. Uh, um, they had a room for 200, but they, they had another 200 waiting to get in, they couldn't. And for the three more days that we stayed in the town of my father, Carrara, I had people come and hug me and say, I'm so sorry about what my forefathers did. I want to, I want you to forgive me. So it was a total, a total a different kind of reaction. And they said, we didn't know we had colonies in Eritrea or Libya or Somalia. And the history books don't tell us about that. Yeah. And it is true. So um, in a way, this person who is half Italian, half Italian with a Hungarian husband is teaching them about their history. That there is a good history and there is a not so good history that you need to also understand. Um, but when you think about what's happening today in Italy with the immigrants and uh, all the all the crisis and sufferings of some of these illegal or legal refugees, um, a film like that, I don't know if I would, we were to show it today how they would uh, how would they would interpret it. Mm -hmm. This was shown a few years back, two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and we had a question from someone in the audience about, um, I think, responding to the earlier story of the impact on the women um, uh, storytellers and how they gave up doing that work. Um, and she, the the question was, uh, now that you know some of the more negative effects of the films, would would you take this into consideration for your next film? Would you warn your subjects? Is that something that you yeah. think about? Yeah, it's um, it's um, it's a it's a good question, another good one. But um, I think the uh, right now we're we're uh, working on on a number of front in, that um, may be of interest. Um, Namely, we did some exhibitions, which were uh, not a whole lot of challenge based on the films in Lisbon and uh, Helsinki and uh, Geneva and so forth. And, and now we still have a, a kind of a compilation film com coming uh, uh, from previous material that, that kind of chronicles the, this uh, almost 40 year span that we spent in Vishnupur, that town in um, West Bengal um, called Vishnupur Lives. And uh, also um, some new venture that uh, is an ethnographic uh, um, electronic um, website combined monograph we i'm not sure which one close-ended or open-ended like a website that places um um all the the in my mother's house specifically into an extraordinary complex background you know it it, it has uh, being a digital publication it has the opportunity to deal with the impact of uh fascism, for example, then, then communism, and the reason why Italy, uh, Italy evolved in a particular way that affected this particular family and their, their uh, spreading into the diaspora. Uh, also, the events in Eritrea that, you know, uh, though the Italian coloni colonialism had a, a great impact, uh, obviously but followed by by a 30 year period of uh, civil war. of uh, resistance and civil war against the ethiopian regime which which still has uh, goings on if it, it just most people don't pay attention to the horn of africa but but the developments there are so extraordinary and 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 this format uh, this digital format with uh, this different layers Mm -hmm. allows us to branch out into the world, you know, in, within the same publication. So 
God willing, and we'll keep doing it. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a project that's funded by the Carnegie Corporation in New York. Mm -hmm. um, it's very yeah. strong. So, you know, that's interesting because it, it speaks to the relationship between films and other kinds of kind of text or, mm -hmm. or, or um, online publications that can mm -hmm. complement it. And also, you know, I, I, I wonder, Tim Ash really uh, was a proponent of you have to have ancillary materials in mm -hmm. order to understand the film. And yet mm -hmm. I think actually watching your films they all stand on their own without yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But there is something, of course, that, I mean, you can add a lot. <laughs> so mm. like even going into working on a, on a web publication, what do you think about as, you know, what's the potential there? What and, and what kinds of information can you convey in a film versus in the text versus, you know, on a new uh, digital platform? Mm. Well, um, the beauty of the of film is that um, it brings the visual to sometimes to um, a dense a dense interpretation of a topic. Uh, to call it monograph. Call it, um, the one that we are right now working on, it it incorporates bits and pieces of the film itself in my mother's house, but also multiplicity of interviews that were never used for the film, but it also looks into a particular period in Italian history or Eritrea. Um, whatever was written about that period, it's also, we, we incorporate it into, into this text. So you have um, historic material, interviews, you have photographs. I mean, photographs tell a, to a different story. Um, <laughs> not just uh, films, film is a moving sort of visual, but the photographs tell, um, you know, whether it is film, uh, for pictures of the 1920s and 30s or the 70s. So, and then the um, uh, uh, songs, we bring in a lot of songs, songs about a particular period in, in, in that reflects to the film. Um, uh, growing up, uh, and my mother would sing a song and I, and, and I would tell her, Mama, I, I've just heard that this is not a good song for you to sing about. And she would say, well, we just sang it when we were kids. We don't, we don't really pay attention to the words. So, so songs also be, uh, you know, we, uh, we use them in, in some, so this text, uh, this monograph, digital monograph that we're working on will incorporate levels and, and levels of different medium of how you sell an idea. And whether the I you are? No, no, sorry. I just wanted to, to say that adding on behalf of the other films and also following up uh, Pam's of the observations that um, we 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 are able to uh, to not just bring bring it back to the communities that we worked in, but to um, but to follow up the the repercussions, the subsequent histories, mm -hmm. and uh, in in a in a sense, um, we we can uh, uh, once this is all going over to the Smithsonian, it will have these these field notes and. Uh, drafts and uh, mm -hmm. publications and uh, and videos and also some evidence of the films that were not made that, uh, you know and then bringing in all these other uh, things the politics the difficulty of securing grant grant applications you know different than, than getting permissions that's a whole other uh, enormous headache often taking a year before yeah. you can move anywhere all of this one has to juggle while also uh, having uh, children and, uh, and, and seeing them grow up and wanting to see the grandchildren grow up. And, and yet you're, you're in, the way, in the way of harm as it were throughout. It's, uh, I, I must say it's, it's, it's a wonderful life with its, all, its, uh, all its contingencies. So you know, in the archive, um, you know, I, I, I was coming into this conversation thinking about the films uh, being deposited there both, and I assume it's both the films and the outtakes. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, yes. and do you have other stuff and how do you kind of link them together or make them accessible? And can you talk a little bit about the diversity of materials? <laughs> Well, I mean, I forgot to mention that I see out of this collection there are several PhD dissertations yet to come. <laughs> so, I mean, because this hasn't really been explored yet because I think it's the difficulty of making when film was film and videotape is videotape. It's, you know, it was only accessible on site, basically. And you have to have, you can't use archival originals, so you really need to uh, have access copies. And so the digital world has opened up a whole new way of accessing. And, and yeah. you're like, as soon as you start telling me about this website you're creating, I'm going, ooh, who's gonna archive that? To say that we we like, we're plunging into this new world is I don't say this lightly because we really are plunging into this new world. But it's also exciting because for the first time, you can make these materials more easily accessible, which will encourage use. Mm -hmm. And so I, what that will be, I honestly don't know because as we so rapidly move from film to videotape to digital, you know, it's just going to continue to move rapidly. We're, we're not, we don't know what the end point is yet. That is my feeling at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, all we can do is just try to do the best we can at the moment we're in to make this material accessible. So I, I'm very excited about uh, the potential of um, the future. Mm. of this material and your website sounds terrific and it's just terrifying to think about it. <laughs> it's 35 for us to construct it uh, i can appreciate that so there's another conversation to be had once it's out <laughs> you know? yeah. just uh, quickly the the um the stability of film and paper far outweighs that yeah. of the digital platform because Absolutely. you know we did a, a, a website that was up and running for several years at wesleyan called learning objects that that was a cycles of life in bishop were based upon our work and and another one uh, called uh, um you know uh sing, the, based on the scrolls and that both of them were compromised and uh and the technology in 10 years, the technology disappeared and cannot, couldn't be replicated. So the scroll ones we, we, we rebuilt and is up uh, at Wesleyan is, but the, the um, cycles of life is still being born, but it just shows you that some of the applications, some of the uh, operating systems are changed in 10 years so yes. what you say about the future is such an unknown just hopefully yeah. there will be a way of preserving the previous chapters in in this development yes mm -hmm. well we have another question from the chat which i want to share um do you think that ethnographic film can also act as a positive agent of change broadening horizons and informing people of wider global trends that impact many different cultures and communities? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's an excellent question. I personally think and know that uh, ethnographic films, I wouldn't say all of them because uh, there are some that are just killers. I mean, they're so <laughs> deadening. I mean, this, those are the earlier kind of uh, um, anthropological uh, documentaries, a kind of film, but ethnographic film, I think, are amenable, and, and, the, and the reason they are made, I mean, all of these films that we that we we sort of uh, worked on, uh, we didn't think that we are doing them to get across. This is about change. I mean, the person has to see it and decide for himself or herself. Wow, this film is still informing me, informing me about many things. For example, when we showed the film of uh, Khalfan and, and Zanzibar at the Margaret Mead Festival in New York, I remember this so clearly going to the film at 8 a.m. The place was jam-packed and, and most of the people were, were in some form of, of uh, either a wheelchair or, or similar kinds of support for the person to get in and sit and watch this film. And the questions they said were, we had no idea 
that people like us somewhere else had this kind of suffering. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that film then, what else they, they thought about. But I think I would say simply, yes, it is, it, they, they do change how we think about other people, but also it changes the people themselves that were part of this film. Um, we didn't, it's not like we went thinking, this is what's gonna happen. We, you don't really know. And you, that's why an earlier question that, that came up, we have to, we do discuss these films before we start with them. We are doing this film. Are you ready for it? These are the implications. No, let's do it. And, and then, uh, you know, uh, the subsequent uh, uh, issue that comes up always, uh, that we didn't set out to make a film that was a, an intervention or that mm -hmm. was a investigative reporting. There are a lot of films today that are just that. And some yeah. of these mm -hmm. films have been recently uh, criticized, uh, uh, for example, that they don't interfere enough, that they <laughs> don't, uh, that, do, that they don't instigate. And, and our answer has always been that we try to be true to, 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 to the truth and to the reality. So we didn't hide domestic uh, violence, but it was brought in indirectly as, as people brought this out themselves. And, and that, uh, in a way, um, it's, um, it's, uh, the films were not made to, to, to change situations. They were made to somehow like Hamlet ho hold up a, uh, mirror to life, in, you know, which uh, mirrors are a good image here, but, uh, but it's through our, our craft and, uh, and the responsibility is ours. So uh, I always say that uh, the films made in India, in Africa, and uh, Italy, and so forth, uh, are critical enough. It's not our role to expose, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to, yeah. to create exposés. We're, we're, we're trying to show the context and, 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 and literally the truth of, of, uh, yeah. of uh, uh, both responding to what people want, mm -hmm. people Thanks. say, people do, as Lina said, putting it into an anthropological context to interpret it, you know, through theory and whatnot. Yeah. And then creating this, uh, what eventually amounts to, I think, visual knowledge. It's uh, um, because film and um, the moving images primarily moves people. So it yeah. brings in, you know, like uh, my uh, Lina's ethnography on, on marriage uh, may, may move individual people if they read it. But that's not the, they want to find out the meaning of uh, marriage in Paul or the meaning of ritual in my play of the gods uh, book. Mm -hmm. But once you put a film, uh, you also deal with this visual immediate impact that, that people respond to emotionally. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that is still uh, unknown how that develops in this new, and thank and, and I have another question here from the, the yeah. audience. Um, do you foresee new learning programs in digital anthropology storytelling, and what would they include? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't we, know. We, we, I um, done this. Think. Uh, remember, Lina, we we uh, we did this kind of thing in those. Um, um, it's a very good point, uh, mm. but but we did that in um, these uh, what they call the uh, learning objects uh, ten years back or yeah. fifteen years back at Wesleyan learning objects where you where you um, um, did uh, the people some some of my colleagues have developed very interesting uh, uh, responses with these that were used in. Uh, in courses, mm -hmm. and uh, um, so uh, definitely the uh, well, one thing we haven't uh, discussed is the way we use these uh, 
uh, films in in designing courses. In, mm -hmm. in, and I, I, for example, we, we kept notes on uh, student papers, uh, which were yeah. often more yeah. insightful than professional <laughs> reviews, <laughs> kept some of them with the consent of the student, of course. Like, uh, what's your feedback on the filmmaking or catching ethnographic questions or issues? Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think I think so because uh, uh, the uh, what what there was something else that um, in in the teaching you you have this as well as um, there was something that occurred to me just now that uh, that is another fascinating development that uh, you know when 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 you. Uh, when when you uh, uh, create something, then then you don't quite know what the effect of it will be, and mm -hmm. this is what we're trying to catch with uh, 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 extensive notes at uh, when festivals or we get invitations to mm -hmm. to uh, give a lecture and uh, show a film, and and the responses to these. Uh, uh, seemingly ephemeral moments are extraordinary when you put them down in writing, like yeah. in Australia, we've shown a bunch of films and, and what people see there. Mm -hmm. The best example for this is uh, in my mother's house, a few years ago, after the film came out in 17, mm -hmm. we were in India and uh, were invited to like a dozen universities all over the country. And, and these, these things don't get uh, beyond that moment. It's, they don't appear in publications unless somebody puts a blog or something. But it was fascinating that in Calcutta, for example, in the American Center, we had uh, this big audience that comes to most of the programs, the films and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And and then in um, in uh, that uh, university, Lina, in uh, Delhi, in Mayatres, the university, they, uh, there was for students. And these two audiences between Calcutta and Delhi uh, was, uh, was absolutely amazing because the students uh, would say, um, you know, many of them, they were moved by the In My Mother's House, and they would say, uh, we know nothing about that. They didn't even know there was a country called Eritrea. Or, you know, know Which nothing, makes me angry, of course. <laughs> nothing about Italian history. But, but we had partition in India. So family is divided. I mean, that was such an astonishing, I didn't think of that, that the audiences bring their own expectation and interpretation. So it, it goes beyond the teaching to almost yeah. like public knowledge that, yeah. you know. I'm wondering, so, do you think though that, that audiences vary, you know, or have brought, you know, yeah, vary more in their responses to a film Text. Do you think that they engage more with the, that kind of visual emotional content and there's more interpretation on the audience's part? I think so. I really believe that film and thanks to the visual, um, it, it's, um, you don't just see it, it draws you, it consumes you. The subject becomes, or you can just say, this is not for me and leave it. But once you are engaged with it, 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 it's really over, some films really overwhelms me. And, and in that sense, not all films are going to have the same story to whoever watches it. Um, and not all films are, inf are informative in the way to answer the earlier question that whether it's gonna change them or not, but at least the ability to, for them to have seen it and to have gotten something out of it was there. And you have to be ready for it. And I think some people were not uh, ready to watch the film in my mother's house. They just uh, and it grabs them at one point, and and um, and 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 some will want to know more about it. Um, so in in um, 
in in the way that f a, a film exhibits itself and the story would be different from reading a book about let's say Italian colonialism. So there is a kind of density that's that's not in the films. That the the mm. uh, but there is a kind of some another force in the film that um, takes a different part of your brain and say wake up. This is something for you to know. Um, so I would say that uh, people would be more interested to watch a film than, I hate to say that, than to read the book because we want our <laughs> books read, you know, but it is what it is. Um, it's how people think for themselves. <laughs> so Pam, as a, as a film archivist, you must think about that and the, the value of the films for the future. Uh, I, and and I don't have an answer. I mean, I wonder about that because I, I tend to use the example of, for instance, because climate change is changing the islands in Oceania so dramatically, and there's going to be huge displacement, most likely. And mm -hmm. are they going to engage or want to engage with the films that we have of their yeah. community? Uh, the young, I don't know. I don't know how the young are going to, I mean, young, I mean, the generations mm -hmm. will, I would like to believe that they will find value not just for recreating like songs and songs of the sorrowful uh, songs of the sour so, sorrowful oh, i can't even mind. say the word <laughs> Man, so you mind. know it, I, you know so there's that taking uh a lot of the imagery that we have for revitalization purposes mm -hmm. but I'd like to think that they will also find other ways to engage with it, whether it's mixing it with something contemporary or whatever, or mixing it with different cultures, you know, yeah. so it's yeah. not, it, but it's there as an exploration of the world as it was, and hopefully it will inform the world as it is and what it will be, you know, we don't really know, you know, it's kind of out of our hands mm. at some point, but mm. I, I mean, I can only hope that people would engage with it for for the good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So yeah. we, we just have a few more questions. Um, and so I wanted to, or a few more minutes. So I wanted to kind of ask a, a wrap up question of, you know, you've been, you've been both making films for quite a long period of time. And also Akos, you in particular have written quite a bit about ethnographic filmmaking and the changing trends and stuff. And, and we've talked a lot about some of the technological changes as well as some of the ethical and political contingencies and I'm, I'm wondering what are your thoughts in terms of filmmaking today what do you see as the, the sort of promise or the challenges for ethnographic filmmakers today well um to start off and i'll hand over to lena uh to start off um we we we, we mentioned that we're we're not uh, uh doing expose type films of social problems and social issues mm -hmm. but uh, but also we mentioned that there are uh, there are people who are doing that and uh, we we don't believe that we are uh, we are the voices uh, to express uh, uh, other people's uh, mm -hmm. uh, sufferings and I think uh, what's happening today is that there is a greater equity coming in between storytelling and the less uh, no no exploitation that i can mm -hmm. i can see in the future and the current you know the the people who are, who are making films are either making them or at least set out to make them for the benefit of their uh, own uh, communities uh, now, sometimes that uh, turns into its opposite, as as it uh, must, because it's uh, it's an intervention. Uh, for example, recently in uh, in Italy, there is a young uh, um, Italian Ghanaian filmmaker who made several films about, the, especially about the the situation of uh, uh, people who came to Italy very young and no 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 other you know, in, in young age, but they're not given a path to citizenship. And based on this bizarre Italian law of use uh, solely. And uh, uh, so they're in a limbo uh, because, uh, you know, perhaps due to the instability of 
of Italian governments, which have other reasons, uh, um, uh, they have never been successfully able to to um, to uh, to address that issue. And at the same time, they did bring a lot of Eritrean refugee families at the time of the civil, civil war that had uh, Italian uh, mixed parentage. And there is a huge Eritrean community in various cities that is is very active and uh, and 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 then so the films that uh, they make and i think this is true uh, elsewhere that there are filmmakers for, for example the indigenous filmmakers in in australia is a fabulous uh, uh, array of films uh, limited states uh, limited uh, uh, series that some of the great uh, uh, um, indigenous filmmakers uh, uh, made. Now, they don't like to be called uh, Aboriginal filmmakers because yeah. that puts them in a box. Yeah. But pe people like Ivan Sen and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and a whole host of others uh, are developing new... And, and, and their filmmaking is, in a way, uh, um, um, similar to ours, that they, uh, they, for example, there is this um, uh, wonderful film uh, uh, that is a is a musical, and uh, it's it through that it issue, it it addresses issues of uh, of the history, exploitation, and whatnot. But but uh, but with such balance and. And, uh, and gentle filmmaking that you wonder with this uh, dreadful history, how mm. can somebody be so generous, mm. you know, mm. to Australia, seeing what, well, anyway, these, these are some of, there are sharper ones, of course, as well, but I see such a nice, uh, such a promising future for, uh, for making some sort of visual, uh, work, whatever the it, uh, it direction it takes. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Well, I think that's a fabulous place to close the conversation. I know there are many, many more stories to tell, but um, <laughs> time is up. So I want to thank you, um, Nina and Akos and Pam, and thank you for making the films and for looking after the films. And um, I'm going to hand it back to Joshua to uh, wrap this up. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Joshua is muted. You're muted. Rookie mistake. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. I just wanted to reiterate, you know, thank you, everyone, to our panelists for sharing their experiences. Insight, Lena, Akos, Pan, Alice. This has been a really wonderful conversation. So it's really been fun to listen, laugh, and cry with you all while off camera. Um, and I also want to thank, thank you, you know, big shout out to the audience for participating, to all who's watched, listened, and commented, commented. And thank you to our CART and ASL providers who helped bring us this event to you, as well as to um, all the people behind the scenes that you haven't seen who have been feeding us questions and doing the technical work, Sarah, Cecilia, and everyone else. You know who you are. Um, and I just want to urge you all to follow the Recovering Voices page on Facebook to get notification about our future events, to find us also on YouTube, to visit our website, and come back for our next program, which is a Q&A, live Q&A, with Director Su Hong In, who's director of The Mountain. Um, and that will be next Friday on March 26th at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, so thank you all and uh, enjoy watching the rest of the Mother Tongue Film Festival. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.